everyone welcome to my channel today I'm gonna to show you this beautifully packaged Japanese Gansai paint set this set comes with a, a swatch chart at the back of the lid then also a separate swatch chart over here and a plastic palette and a color block is larger than usual and the number is number of the color is printed at the back I'm gonna swatch these colors today and I'm gonna give you a very close-up look of each color and the corresponding color number uh, so you can just get an idea what range of colors this set offers when I bought this set I thought this was the largest set they have later I got to know that they actually have a bigger set this is the 48 color set I have a hundred color set also it's a wooden box it has a very vintage delightful packaging uh, I have added this to my wish list these colors are a little bit expensive than a regular watercolor set all right so let's jump into the swatching uh, you can see that these reds are beautiful colored bright opaque red colors One thing I noticed about these colors is that uh, some of the reds are very similar to each other and that is to be expected in a large set like this. Usually in large sets uh, you get a couple of colors that have very little variation between each other. Uh, but as we go down the line you can see that the reds get gradually more yellowish so they turn to orange and then yellows isn't this a beautiful color there's something about the way the Japanese people package their art supplies I'm a huge fan of Japanese art supplies simply because their packages are just delightful they are the most aesthetically pleasing, beautiful, very well done, neat, elegant boxes. They have a unique feel and quality about their packages. Uh, so I consider Japanese and probably Chinese too, generally in the East Asian region. I consider them to be one of the best when it comes to packaging. I got this set for the most superficial reason it's because I like the packaging uh, not necessarily because I particularly like Gansai paint which brings us to the discussion what is the difference between Japanese Gansai paint versus regular watercolor paint I know there's a whole lot of videos out there on YouTube explaining this and Others probably explain this a little bit better. Uh, I have used Gansai paint before. I have their smaller sets. So I can give you my personal opinions. The number one thing I can talk about is that these paints are definitely sticky. Once you wet the palette, uh, when the wetness dries a little bit, you can definitely feel a stickiness and a difficult to, uh, for the paint to flow as naturally as a regular watercolor would do and also they are a little bit more opaque than a regular watercolor so a regular watercolor is very flowy and very flexible and has this uh, free flowing kind of feel about a regular watercolor set but this Gansai paint does that a little less I heard that it's because of the way the binder is made it's a different uh, formula they use for the binder of these paints and it's a glue based medium glue based binder because of that probably the paint doesn't spread out as freely as a regular watercolor and also has this very thick consistency and also it's very opaque So being sticky and um, not as free flowing as usual is a quality about Gansai that I don't particularly like. I like that Gansai paint is very opaque and very kind of thick and they offer really bright beautiful colors. All those aspects are very good about these paints 
but I don't like the fact that it's not as free flowing and doesn't spread out as uh, much as a regular watercolor. But the Japanese still consider these to be uh, their watercolors. It's called Japanese watercolors. So it has a lot of other qualities that a regular uh, Western watercolor would have. I would say this Gansai paint sits somewhere between a regular watercolor and gouache. Uh, the finish of the Gansai paint is just beautiful. It has it has this uh, very shiny sheen about the finished uh, artwork. Some people might not like that, but that is a big one for me. I like it very much. Once a regular watercolor dries, uh, the colors can change, colors can darken and look uh, more flatter. So those are the things that I like about Gansai and I don't like about Gansai. Also I would like to talk a little bit about uh, light fasteners. Now there's a lot of hype in the artist community about light fasteners. Now light fasteners is not something that I typically check in any of the art supplies that I buy. And this is the reason why. I don't think light fastness is a quality of a painting that can be measured in decades. Uh, it's something that is measured uh, in terms of centuries. If you buy something now and you paint something with it, there's a very good chance unless you use very cheap quality student grade materials. Even then, there's a very good chance that the painting will stay the same for the next two decades. I have personal experience uh, painting with student grade art supplies that have stayed inside my sketchbooks and cupboards over the course of decades and uh, 10 to 20 years they haven't changed a bit. I don't uh, typically uh, paint to sell. I do this as a hobby. So unless you are a professional artist who wants to, to sell your artwork or you somehow have a way of getting some of your work into an art gallery where it would hang on the walls uh, and exposed, be exposed to sunlight. I don't think you need to worry about light fastness. I have paintings that have been hanging on my walls and I live in a very tropical country. And I get a lot of sunlight through my windows for most of the day. And the paintings haven't changed and they have been painted using a mixture of professional grade as well as student grade materials. So the paintings have generally stayed the same without going through any fading process. And so what I personally feel is that if you want your paintings to stay the same 100 years, after you have passed away, then yeah, you, you need to buy professional grade materials, the right kind of materials that won't make your artwork fade away with time or the fading process is slowed. But if you're just a hobbyist, even if you submit your artwork for competitions, if you don't have that long term vision for your work, then basing your purchasing decisions on light fastness is unnecessary. That's what I feel and I personally feel that a lot of this has to do with marketing also. Brands could be marketing this quality to bump up their prices and win against competition or that might justify a higher price tag that might actually not even be relevant to the type of work that you do and the goals that you have. It's a very niche audience of artists who might actually have to worry about light fastness. For most of us, I don't see a relevance there. So that's something out there for you to think about uh, when, you, uh, when, you, when you buy art supplies. Consider getting one of these sets. I have no affiliation with the company. Um, I just think uh, it's worth trying. And uh, these sets come in uh, small packs as well. They have 6, 12, 24, 36, 48 and also a 100 color set. 
and all of them have nice neat packages boxes so what i did first was i bought a six color set the colors are very beautiful uh, even in the six set they ha they cover a reasonable range uh, of six colors one more thing about these paints is that um, from what i have observed personally it's difficult to mix them uh, too much uh, they become a little muddy uh, after mixing a couple of colors together i would i wouldn't try to mix them too much uh, so unlike a traditional watercolor western watercolor these colors somehow become a sort of muddy when you mix them with each other i don't know why that is uh, it's probably the way the pigment is which is why i recommend first trying out the smaller set they have and if you happen to like it you can go for the bigger set or the 48 or the 100 set i would definitely have gotten the 100 set uh, i didn't know they had it by the time i bought 48 but maybe the 100 is a recent uh, introduction uh, so if you guys know anything about that please uh, leave a comment down below uh, this palette has three metallic colors silver gold and uh, dusty gold some dark gold color all three of them are so beautiful this brand offers their metallics in a separate set as well so you can see how they shine in the light very beautiful this is the white color that uh, i did not paint because the paper is white it has a very nice range of 48 colors covering pretty much the entire spectrum of colors and you can mix these up and create more colors of your own all right guys i hope you enjoyed today's video and i'll see you next time with more art videos bye bye